Good morning. What is going on, my YouTube family? I'm over here back. We're going to go ahead and do a follow up with my good old friend, Albert. And for those that are new to the channel, I just want to go ahead and uh, do a little recap with Albert. All right, Albert. Go ahead and introduce yourself again to the uh, lovely people of the world. Hi, my name's Albert. Uh, Ken, Ken here is doing a second video with me. Uh, I, I guess to clear up some things that uh, people had questions about uh, that didn't come out in the first video. Okay. And so you, uh, I provided your email for the people, the Previa guys, if they wanted to go ahead and contact you. And you, if you want to go ahead and just share your email again uh, to the new audiences that might want to help out. Okay, it's, it's Albert the Taxi Driver, and that's Gmail. I that's be, obviously I used to be a taxi driver. That's <laughs> that's why. Hey. Okay. Okay. So last night was pretty like here. I'm gonna go ahead and show the audience the the rain clouds and all that from last night. But was it sprinkling or was it raining last night in the uh, Los Angeles County? It was. I, I was doing deliveries in that. Um, it, uh, yeah, because I got glasses, it makes it kind of hard to see. But yeah, and so you there. were delivering uh, yeah. food on your bike. That's, do you have yeah. light in your your luxury uh, RV? I mean, your luxury uh, Previa, so they can see that you're you actually uh, deliver food on your bike. Sure, where to put this light? Uh, oh, oh. Maybe, maybe over here. Right there. Okay. Yeah. I, I could go ahead and hold it so they could see the uh, okay. that you you make food deliveries on your ten speed bike right here. Um, even in the rain, rain, hail or snow won't stop Albert the taxi man. And so, you told me last night it was so cold that you had to go to the storage room to get an extra jacket. Oh, well, I, I went and got the coat a couple of days ago because I knew that it was gonna It was gonna start getting pretty cold that I, I've had this since I was a taxi driver so from a thrift store like everything else. Okay Sounds good Now let's go ahead. Okay, so let me go ahead and if you don't mind just coming out and then we'll go ahead and uh, talk to you Should I shut that off? Or yeah, please if, yeah, we we it's getting a little bit lighter, so, um, yeah, so that's, this is your, uh, how did they say the Hyatt, the Hyatt suite or, or this the Hilton? Oh, geez, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's see which one was nicer. I, I don't know, probably like the Hilton. I okay, guess. so this is the Hilton on wheels. Yeah. 1991 Toyota Previa with a bad transmission. And so, go ahead and tell the folks, uh, because the reason why you don't ride uh, this vehicle a lot is because of the bad transmission and maybe engine problems? Uh, the only reason I ever used this at all before it had a bad transmission, uh, for one thing, I, I had a place to stay at that time, and um, DoorDash changed their policies. Uh, the, the, Couriers are constantly trying to outmaneuver the companies, and the companies are constantly trying to outmaneuver the couriers. It, it was the same thing as a taxi driver, uh, it, as it is in gig work, uh, food delivery. So that ruined my transmission. Uh, and, uh, it, it, you know, it's a, almost a 35 year old van. Uh, it's a and now if i were to get it fixed if it was running beautifully i still wouldn't use it for deliveries i'd still drive it as little as possible because i, I now know that you if you're living in your car you don't want to tear it up so i'd, I'd continue doing bicycle deliveries I, I believe yeah that is definitely a good answer because i found out the hard way too is you want to use your vehicle that you're living in as least as possible because if anything happens to it it's thousands of dollars worth of of fixing it could be yeah yeah be. that's very good um so right now with the food delivery i myself is seeing like a slow down turn in terms of orders and tips is that the same situation with you it, 
it is uh it's been going downhill see i started in 2019 and then the pandemic hit i guess early in 220 and there were these shutdowns and uh, a little experience combined with the effect of the shutdowns really shot my income way up and then uh, as people's uh, unemployment money was running out and uh, as the pandemic was winding down uh, the business was winding down you know and now uh, I'd say it was back about where it was when I started except I didn't have a I had a place to stay when I started so the lower income was not a problem uh, what I, what I found lately is that uh, I can still get some del deliveries I just have to take every order and I have to go places where uh, people I, don't want to go yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> like Compton <Yeah. laughs> I've been there I, I, yeah I, I, I I've been there a couple times you know. um, we all have <laughs> okay so sorry to cut you, cut you off Albert but this is the clarification that everybody online that saw your video wants to know okay this is the big one you're 64 years of age correct yeah the earliest that you can collect Social Security is 62 but you have not taken Social Security and a lot of people online are saying why don't you apply for Social Security now I told the people he has his reasoning now you can go ahead and clarify yourself well I you know I would have claimed it as soon as I was eligible for it which was a couple years after I started doing this kind of work uh, but my tax guy who is a smart man he, he claimed his when he was 70 uh, at which point you get a hundred and twenty four percent and he, he was saying to me well Al you, you didn't make that much over the years and that hurts you and I, I don't remember what all he said but it's just there are people who feel that it's a lot wiser to wait as long as you can now I understand the logic that you might fall over dead when you're 65 so then what was the point in not claiming it when you were 62 you know I I'm my plans even though my situation right now makes it very difficult my my plans are to to be healthy later and I still got I'm not sure how the order of this saying is supposed to go uh, places to go things to go to do people to meet whatever the order of that saying is you've heard it before uh, I still got plenty of things I want to do, so I'm not planning on uh, biting the dust when I'm 70. You know, I plan to keep on going. I I don't ever plan to retire uh, because I just don't want to. Uh, you know, I I'll always have things I want to do. So uh, maybe I'd like to have it be a little easier when I hit 70 and get 124 percent instead of instead of the like 65 percent that it would have been if I'd have claimed it when I was 62 you know okay so. that sounds like a good clarification for the audience you're waiting to get the major bang for your bucks yeah. at past 65 I, I would say or you don't know when but right now it's you're looking towards 70 yeah 67 is 100 and 100% according to Uncle Sam and 70 is 124% which I, sounds kind of ridiculous why don't they just say that this why don't they label the exact same amount as being 100% at 70 you know I mean that's yeah. Uncle Sam for you got to complicate things yeah you know? now yeah. <clears throat> you were at once considering moving overseas like I'm doing for cheaper living and uh, I I thought I was I thought you were incorrect when you were talking about the Philippines needing a fifty thousand dollar deposit in the bank account and when I researched it it was sure correct you need fifty thousand dollar to get a retirement visa in the Philippines. Yeah. 
and so that is pretty much like out of your budget at this time I, I thought about Thailand a lot okay. when I was a when I was a uh, taxi driver because taxi driving was pretty awful and I so yeah I was I was wanting to escape and uh, anyway I thought about Thailand a lot and what they do over there apparently and I had forgotten about it until recently I saw somebody mention it in the comments on the last video that uh, Kenny did with me uh, is you got to leave the country every 30 days you 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 cross over the border mm -hmm. into Burma and you're you're there I don't know you stay there a few hours and you come back over yeah. again uh, uh, I think maybe I see I met somebody uh, in Cambodia when the, they were doing the border crossing from Thailand to uh, Cambodia I think they change it to maybe one or two days or a week you know it changes constantly you know they don't they, it, it yeah. depends whatever like that but uh, it's not that hard uh, it, it's just it takes a toll on you know your 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 money to across the border and to pay uh, you know the visa go back and forth but you know people are doing it um, people are doing it and so Vietnam another place that a lot of people want to go and retire they don't have a retirement visa so you have to do the same thing every three months leave the country and go back yeah. so let's see um, so are you still at this time possibly considering and looking more research into moving overseas with the situation like this well I'm uh, I'm always trying to keep as many ideas uh, I'm always trying to be open to as many ideas as possible so uh, from time to time I try to write everything down and come up with a clear step-by-step -step plan and and that plan evolves a little bit over, over time, but sure, I'm considering it. Sure, sure, it's a possibility. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what you do if you get sick on the day you're supposed to cross the border. I mean, it well, could get you in some trouble. It's, no, it's not you know. like, I don't think it's exact date. Like you have to say, for example, you have a three month visa or six month visa, right? So you will go ahead and leave like one or two, three weeks before your visa expire. Yeah. And then it, adds to another three months you know when the on the date that you left and come back in so it's like it's not like exact you don't have to be the exact three months you could leave one month earlier or whatever just as long as, as you leave the country and sometimes like i said it could be like for an hour two hours you just like when when i was in the uh, thailand border with cambodia you just cross the border play the casino in cambodia for a couple hours and walk back in um, there's, you know, like I said, there's all different ways of, of trying to get around things. And, uh, um, that's just one of the things that we have to do to get, you know, they make it hard for people to try to live anywhere or all over the world. Somebody was mentioning about Colombia is probably a better, uh, country for retirees because it's the same time zone as the USA and it's much closer. Yeah. I, I've no, I've i heard uh, a lot of people really like retiring to different Latin American countries, including Mexico. Okay. So this is another one of my ideas that uh, I was about to do, is crossing the border, living in Tijuana, and working in San Diego. Have you ever considered that? Uh, no, no I, I haven't considered doing that, no. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was watching... I don't know if you were telling. I think I saw it in one of your videos. I was I was checking out where you were saying uh, it's six hours to get across the border. Yeah, um, I, I I was talking about on my one of my videos because I did the border crossing myself too, and I saw videos of people crossing the border to go to work, and the lines of the car from Tijuana to go into San Diego. It's four, five, six, seven hours, depending. And like you said, it takes your a toll on your mind and body for, you know, before even going to work, you're stuck in traffic for four or five hours. So they don't make it very easy for the border crosser. But it might be faster if you're just walking uh, into the gates. So, but like I said, there's a lot of people that's doing it already. And so that makes it even tougher because more and more people yeah. are in the line. I don't know, Albert, we have to go ahead and find ways 
to fight this because I don't know about this uh, your Hilton uh, yeah, well, setup. I don't know how long it's going to last. I, I have had thoughts of because I'm in California. I have had thoughts of uh, buying a, an acre of land in the high desert and setting up something maybe. I, I thought about hauling a shed from Home Depot out there. I thought of about building my own shed from scraps. I, uh, I know of one guy who went out to Slab City near the old uh, air base near Nyland and he hauled hay bales out there for insulation and built himself kind of an igloo out of hay bales, you know. Uh, just something out there that I could live in I, uh, and nobody can kick me off it. Nobody can come along and say, we're raising the rent, you gotta leave, you know, all that kind of thing. Uh, uh, I've thought about doing the same thing in other states possibly. Uh, you know, Michigan, uh, I lived, lived the first year of my life in a cabin in northern Michigan, so I uh, thought about things like that. Uh, so it sounds like, Albert, you're, you're in the same boat as I am where you got to get the hell out of California or it, out of Los Angeles County. Yeah, it's possible, but it's also possible I might stay here and, and work. <laughs> as a, I, I, I'm in, you know, it's... It's true that I didn't just get out of high school, but I've wanted to be a musician ever since I was in high school. So, uh, uh, and it's true that the genres of music that I I loved when I was a kid are now sort of extinct. Uh, only a dinosaur listens to that kind of music. But there are certain types of music that transcend generations in time. Uh, um uh, you know i i'm lost as far as the the hip-hop and all goes and all, although i like listening to some of it and the kind of music that i just sent me into another world when i was listening to it it was like uh uh it's just i i don't know whatever kind of music it is you liked when you were a kid it probably it probably what can I say? It's like you drank espresso, smoked a joint, and did everything else you could do all at once. It, it just took you into another plane of existence, <laughs> you know? And that that's kind of what music does to you. Uh, so, yeah, that's that. That sounds great. I mean, you know, you, know, you got to get away from this rat race and music uh, transcend you to another level. Yeah. Um, and this is what I'm trying to get to you right now. I, have you ever heard of GoFundMe? I, I have, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's so interesting. are you interested in getting a GoFundMe account open to get people that's interested in your cause to help you out? You know, that's something I should maybe think about. Okay, because yeah. I, I didn't have a GoFundMe until I started my YouTube uh, account and somebody mentioned, how come you don't have a GoFundMe account? And so that's when I took the time to do the GoFundMe account. And I think that you're a prime candidate for this uh, uh, GoFundMe account. Or do you even have PayPal? You know, I, all those kind of things are kind of cumbersome for me. Uh, like, there's, there's a lot of things that are common for a lot of people. They're just cumbersome for me. I, I, I just recently opened up a Starbucks account because they give you a free refill. Uh, to be honest, I brew my own coffee and I go into Starbucks and I pour hot water into it. I, I, I cold brew espresso overnight in my cab, so my, my, my triple espresso cost me about 25 cents. Uh, so I saw him do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you got to save whatever penny you can. But honestly, Albert, you're gonna have to think about if you are people want to go ahead and help you out you're gonna to have to open up a paypal account uh and collect donations a gofundme account and even uh one of the apps that i use called ko-fi Co i think it's like buy me a coffee and people that is interested in helping you out they have a legit and legal way to give you donations so i'm just giving you some pointers to you have to be more open to the world 
because people want to help but they don't know how to help and those are the avenues that people are donating with so maybe i could go ahead and help you out later today or whatever it is that you if you're interested in getting uh those accounts open Ooh. yeah it might be a little bit too much for you right now but Absolutely. you got to think about it but yeah um let me go ahead yeah folks uh i'm gonna see what i can do with uh, albert today and try to set him up with those uh different accounts that i had because i i never knew about the gofundme and all these other stuff until i did my youtube channel and i i'm hoping albert is going to do his uh, youtube channel one of these days but we're gonna try to start off one step at a time okay oh, hey, albert what is it that you want to say before we end this video just th thank you f thanks for your interest I mean there there were a lot of uh, well wishes on the last video and I that I, I believe in a lot beyond what you can see and hear and if somebody blesses me or wishes me well uh, that uh, that's um, that's that's not an empty wish uh, your your good thoughts towards others have an effect is is what i believe so uh, i appreciate all just all the goodwill i appreciate it thank you okay i'm gonna go ahead and uh, wrap this uh, video up uh i want to go ahead and thank my audience for staying this long and uh, i'm gonna go ahead and try to set up everything we can with uh, albert to get his donations and everybody have a wonderful day peace out